welcome! I'm Michelle Anderson, founder of Clarinet Mentors, where I try and help you play the clarinet more easily. Today, I want to give you my list of what I feel are some of the most important pieces of equipment to upgrade, and if I had to choose what order, if I was going to upgrade my equipment piece by piece, I would do it in what that order would be. I, I get lots of emails from clarinetists all over the world who ask questions about, you know, what kind of ligature do I use or mouthpiece? And then someone sent in a great one saying, well, really, you know, I have a whole set of beginner stuff and I probably am going to upgrade piece by piece. What would be my priorities? What should we do first? So I'm going to give you my recommendations. I think there would be a lot of great discussion to be had about this, so feel free to write comments in the comments box below this because I know there are many, many opinions about this and I'll share mine with you. I'd love to hear yours as well. So I think, first of all, what I have to say is I'm going to tell you some of the types of gear that I really like, but I'm completely acknowledging that there is great gear out there that I'm going to forget to mention. So this is not a comprehensive list, it's just kind of a list of some of the things I really like. So that's why I encourage you to put your comments in. I'm sure there are other great things that we could add to this conversation. But let's assume you are somebody who has a very beginning level setup for your clarinet. And it might be fine to get you started, but you're at a point where you recognize that the equipment you use might be limiting your playing. And I do believe that. There are certain pieces of gear that really make it easier to play, and then there are certain pieces of gear that really help you to sound better. And that's what we want to talk about in today's video. I think, I was trying to think of the number one thing to upgrade, and I'm kind of calling it a tie. I think it comes down to reeds and the mouthpiece. So first of all, reeds, we can't play without them. We need to have good reeds, and there's two big factors there. One is to make sure you're using the correct reed strength for your level of playing. And I'll post a link in the comments box or in the description of this video to another video I've done that really helps you figure out if you're using the right strength. So that's a different issue, but I will say if that's something you haven't considered, please watch that video. Because if you're on the wrong reed strength, it'll actually be much harder to play and you're not going to sound good. But then we get to, well, what kind of reeds should I use? Well, there's so many different kinds of reeds out there that work well. And again, for all of these things, as I get into specifics, I'm going to say you really need to test them and see what works well for you on your setup. I do believe, though, that some reeds are better than others, and I encourage you to try some out because it's the vibration of the reed that's the core to our clarinet sand, and we need to have a good reed to make that work. There are many kind of reeds that I like and appreciate. If you are um, just starting on some very basic level and you want to upgrade a bit, um, good ones to consider are the Mitchell Lurie reeds. They tend to run a little bit softer than other brands, so if you play a two and a half of most types, then you need a three in the Mitchell Lurie. That's kind of what I would call um, an intermediate level as far as cost goes and performance goes. Good reeds, definitely better than most beginner reeds. There are other reeds I would put in that category. And then above that, there are the more um, higher end reeds, and there are many of them. I'll tell you the ones that I'm playing on these days, just to share with you a little bit. So sometimes I play on the Van Doren V12. I really like the Stoyer exclusive reeds. Actually, all the Stoyer reeds I've tried, I quite like. They're just not as easy to get a hold of sometimes. Uh, every now and then I experiment with the Legere signature reads, and I like the European cut. For me, the European cut is a big step ahead, and I have um, separate videos about specifics of each kind of read, but just sharing with you what I like. I also really like the new Silverstein Alta read. So these are all higher end reads. Another high end one that I'm obviously leaving off here because I don't have any in my hands are some of the Daddario uh, higher end reads. I know lots of people who really like those and use them successfully. So this is kind of what you would find in my read case on any given day. Sometimes I'll just choose what's easily available in my music store, but I've had good success with all of these reads that I've just shown you. So you, as a player, I recommend you try some higher end reads. I know they're more expensive, but because they're good quality cane, sometimes they last longer and the cost might, in a way, balance out in the long run. That's something I would encourage people to experiment with for sure. But I also said the mouthpiece. I think 
for most of my students, when they come to me, if they show up with a very beginning level instrument, in most cases, the mouthpiece that comes with a beginning level clarinet is not very good. It's certainly good enough to get you started and to make sounds, but it's so easy to improve those with some great mouthpieces that are available commercially. And that's what I recommend people upgrade. Now, everyone's mouth is shaped differently, and so mouthpieces work really differently from person to person. I don't have one favorite mouthpiece that I would recommend universally to everyone. What I will say is hopefully you're in a position where you could go into a music store that has a few different mouthpieces and test them out. Or likewise, some of the higher end mouthpiece manufacturers will send you a few mouthpieces to try so that in your own home you maybe have a few days to play through them and pick the one that really works best for your mouth. There are a lot of great mouthpieces that are roughly between $100 and $150 that I'll recommend to students who have the ability to look in that range. Certainly Van Doren makes a lot of great mouthpieces in that range. Selmer has some great ones. BG has just two models, but they're very good for a lot of different people, or two that I know of at the time of this videotaping. Um, Daddario also makes some good mouthpieces. So all of those are kind of in that price range. Um, La Vecchia, a small company, but had really some great mouthpieces there. Those are all um, things that when you put them on and you find the one that works well for your face and your setup, give you much more even and resonant tone. And even articulation, tonguing can feel easier. It can make a huge difference to your sound. And often when you find a mouthpiece that you really like, if you later upgrade your clarinet, you can keep that good mouthpiece and use it on your upgraded instrument. So for the, the price, a good mouthpiece makes almost as much difference as a good clarinet. And there are higher end mouthpieces above those ones that I just mentioned. Those tend to be made by uh, a real craftsman. Price can vary, but often they're in the $300 to $400 range, depending on who's making them. And there are so many great makers. I would be for sure leaving a bunch out, but I'll tell you the ones that I've used myself and enjoyed. I'm currently playing on a Bakun mouthpiece. I've also really liked the Michael Lomax mouthpieces. I've had some Greg Smith mouthpieces, and there are many more good ones out there. Again, it's whatever works well for you, but I do think that a high-end mouthpiece, if we're talking three or four hundred dollars, it can pretty well make as much difference as an eight thousand dollar clarinet. So it's definitely one of the first pieces of gear you should consider upgrading keeping in mind that you can use that as you upgrade other equipment down the road. All right, those are my ties for number one, reeds and mouthpieces. I know it's two different things. Probably reeds make sense to happen first, but in a way I think the mouthpiece can make even a more dramatic difference. So kind of moving down the clarinet, the next thing I think that can make a significant difference to how your clarinet sounds, this is for tone, um, is the barrel. And we often just kind of overlook this little piece here between the mouthpiece and the rest of the instrument, but it can make quite an effect on how the instrument sounds. And many people are now experimenting with different types of barrels. There's lots of them out there. I use Bakun barrels. I know there are other great ones out there. They come in different kinds of wood, different shapes. What I have here is two very different shaped ones, just to show you for purposes of the video. One's made out of cocobola wood, one's made out of granadilla wood. So different shapes, different woods, they all produce a slightly different type of tone, different type of sound. And I was shocked at how much of a difference it made to my instrument. Now, more interestingly, some of the, even some of the less expensive barrels, let's say the ones that might be in the $100 to $150 range, um, I've had students with a full plastic clarinet put one of those wooden barrels on their clarinet and drastically transform the tone. The biggest difference, I think, in sound between a plastic instrument and a wooden one is the wooden one has a much warmer, resonant tone, which we really like as clarinetists. Just putting the barrel on can make your clarinet, that's a plastic beginner instrument, sound instantly like an intermediate level clarinet. And I think that's of huge value to people. If you're not quite at the position where you're ready to upgrade to a wooden clarinet, just getting the wooden barrel might make a big difference. And I should say, 
that, again, if you have a chance to test them, it's great. The other thing you can take into consideration if you're getting a new barrel for your clarinet is that they come in different lengths. On most clarinets, B-flat clarinets, the barrel that comes with it is probably 65 millimeters. If you don't know how long it is, you can certainly measure it, but sometimes it'll say right on the back of the barrel. If you find that your setup, and that's influenced by your reeds, your mouthpiece, your clarinet itself, tends to play sharp a lot, and that you're always having to pull your barrel out to tune, perhaps over a millimeter, then you can consider getting a longer barrel. So if, you're, if you have a 65 millimeter barrel and you're always pulling at least two millimeters, well for sure, get at least a 66, but you might even play test a 67 and see how your pitch is. Um, pulling the barrel out will tune the instrument, but a longer barrel will tune it more proportionately and better across the instrument. So again, many good barrel types out there. You can add your favorites into the comments below and more and more seem to be created all the time. I happen to love the ones I have. They've made a big difference to my playing and I really recommend you get a chance to try some too. All right, next I would probably put the ligature. However, it's a really inexpensive upgrade. So let's say you wanted to upgrade your gear and you only had $40 to spend. There's some good ligatures that are $40 that are better than the basic two screw metal one that comes with your clarinet. So they're worth experimenting with. Again, there are many types of ligatures and many price points out there. So you need to test them out. I'll show you some of the kinds that are out there. Most of the higher end ligatures, although not all of them, have it set so that the screw goes to the back of the mouthpiece rather than the front side where the reed is. And the goal of the ligature is to allow the reed to vibrate as much as it can for good sound, but still hold it in place so that we don't get air leaking out the sides. And people have come up with lots of different materials to use on the ligature, lots of different designs to achieve that effect. The one that I use right now is the Silverstein ligature, gold plated. Um, there are other ligatures that I use and love. There are a lot that sort of look like this. They're made out of rubber or leather like this particular one. Um, I'll open up a box just to show you some. This is a sample from the BG company where they have metal ones with also one screw. And you can see lots of different colors here. We can have silver plating, we can have a beautiful rose gold plating, or we can just have gold. And believe it or not, when I play tested these, the metal plating does affect the tone a little bit. I was surprised at how much it did. So. The basic design of the ligature will make the reed um, vibrate better, so generally you get more sound more easily with a better ligature. That's a benefit of it. And then it's fine-tuning what kind of material you use and exactly the design you have if it's the sound that you want. There are subtle differences from ligature to ligature. If you we're kind of looking at something, well, you know, I have a separate video on ligatures that has a full list. I'll put a link to it below here. but. I would say a ligature does make a difference and the ones that I'm showing you now range in price from probably between about thirty or forty dollars up to a couple hundred dollars and up to you to decide which one you want to invest in and what works best but I think they are definitely worth experimenting with. Alright, so we kind of been starting at the top of the clarinet. We have our reeds, our mouthpieces, our ligatures, our barrels. One other thing to consider upgrading, and probably I would consider this most if you had either a plastic clarinet that you wanted to sound like an intermediate wooden clarinet, or you had a pretty good intermediate level clarinet and you weren't quite ready to upgrade to a fully professional level, but you wanted it to sound better, then that would be to have the barrel, which a, a professional barrel will improve an intermediate wooden clarinet quite a bit, and then to consider adding a professional custom bell. Not a custom bell, just a professionally made bell. And again, I know there are um, lots of people who are working on these and putting out great bells. This one is a Bakun Coca-Cola bell. Uh, this is the MOBA. I really love it. I, again, thought this is the end of the instrument. How could this possibly affect my tone? But it does a couple of things. It, it adds resonance and it somehow just seems to like pull the sound through the instrument better. Where I really notice a difference is how easy it is to move from lower notes to high notes. It somehow has an effect of evening out the register so that 
the response when I'm blowing doesn't feel so different. So it's easier for me to just kind of blow freely and move my fingers from low to high and have the notes feel more comfortable. So I have had students who have an intermediate clarinet, and by intermediate what I mean is there are some great wooden clarinets, they're usually around $1,500 just to give you a ballpark figure that sound good, adding a, a, a professional barrel and bell, which the two together might cost $1,000, kind of make that a $2,500 clarinet. But if you've already had it for a few years and you're not quite ready to spend the three to $10,000 on the next level clarinet, adding that extra $1,000 can honestly make an instrument sound as good as many of those $3,000 clarinets. Again, it depends on your clarinet and, and how the woods interact together. So it's worth experimenting with, but I do mention that because it can make quite a difference. I found on my E-flat clarinet especially, um, it really helped to make it easier to play and to make the sound really good. So something I would recommend experimenting with. A lot of the higher end clarinets already come with professional barrels and bells, but if not, definitely something for you to look into. So the next thing that that leaves is the actual clarinet itself, which of course we can upgrade and there are many different levels of clarinets out there in the world. If you have a very basic level clarinet that's made out of plastic, uh, there are some very good plastic clarinets from the more reputable clarinet makers. So if it's a company that makes student level clarinets and intermediate and professional clarinets, then odds are their plastic clarinets are good quality. The keys are good quality. There's just a limit to how warm a, and, and what kind of tone you can have with a plastic instrument. Generally, they will also put more care into the key work and construction on the higher level instruments. So you're going to find that on a student clarinet, the keys might more easily bend out of shape, which can be frustrating because if the keys aren't closing properly, it's going to feel hard to play and it's not going to sound good. So the professional levels tend to just be constructed a little bit better. Every clarinet plays differently because every piece of wood resonates differently. So I could sit down with five clarinets made by the same company with the same model number stamped on them and they're going to play differently. So again, if you have a chance to try out instruments when it's time for you to upgrade, I highly recommend it. You really want to find one that you love the sound on. And when you switch between brands, the keys might be laid out a little bit differently. It takes a little getting used to. I would say that shouldn't be a big issue. The really big issue when you're choosing a new clarinet should be if you love the sound of it. Your fingers can adapt to a slightly different finger system pretty easily, but the sound that it makes sometimes is unique to that piece of wood. So again, many great clarinets out there. I know I'm going to be leaving some off, but if I'm having my students test them out, um, ones that we would look at, I, I play in a Bakun clarinet, and Bakun makes many levels. I also like some of the Yamaha clarinets, and the Selmer clarinets, and the Buffet Company, and the Jupiter Company, and I know there's other ones out there. These are all companies that do have clarinets at the student level, the intermediate level, and higher end, and they put some care into their instruments, and I've had students have good clarinets on all of those instruments. So I think that upgrading your clarinet is definitely a good thing to do when it's time, but Perhaps this video will give you some idea on why we'd upgrade things and what order. So just to recap, number one, reed and mouthpiece. Number two, probably a barrel for tuning your clarinet better and helping it for sound. Number three, which could be number one if finances are a real factor, is the ligature. It just gives you a little more resonance out of what you have. Then we can look at the bells as a way to really upgrade the smoothness of sound and the quality of sound. And then we have the entire instrument, which is going to range in price for an upgrade, probably between $1,000 and $10,000, depending on how fancy you want to go with it. But I think that clarinet playing is so much fun, it is important to have gear that works well for you as a player. So do please take the time to find a reed and ligature, or sorry, a reed and mouthpiece combination that works well for you. And that's going to make it easier for you to evaluate all the other pieces of gear that we've talked about. All right, that's my little mini gear recommendations for today. I hope you found this video helpful. I would love to hear your comments. And I also have an invitation for you. 
If you're not a member of my Clarinet Mentors community, it's totally free to join and I would love to have you join in. You simply go to www.learnclarinetnow.com and put in your name and email address. About once a month, I create an educational video like today's. I send it out with a newsletter, but along with the video, I'll also have some other pointers on gear that I really love or music that I found or special clarinet events. Sometimes I'll have live online clarinet events that I'll invite you to. So all kinds of stuff like that. If it's not a good fit for you, it's very easy to unjoin at any time. But as I said, it's totally free. We have a wonderful group of clarinetists from all over the world who love playing the instrument and I'd love to include you in my community. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope you're really enjoying your clarinet, making some great music, and I look forward to seeing you next time.